right, ladies, so we're going to do a quick review of the types of credit before we move on to the rest of the information in Chapter 4 uh, of your textbook. Um, so, types of credit. We talked about financial institutions. There are charge accounts. Uh, those would be something like a Macy's card or a Nordstrom's card. And we talked about credit cards, which those are the typical Visa card, MasterCard, uh, American Express, all of those typical credit cards. And then debit cards, which withdraw money right from your account. I'm going to go into those in a little bit more detail um, now. So there are lots of different types of financial institutions, right? There are commercial banks, there are savings and loan associations, there are savings banks, which do exactly what they say, they're for saving. Same thing with savings and loan associations, those are for savings um, and loans. Uh, and then commercial banks, those are the big banks. So if you think about um, uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, those would be more of the commercial banks. Then there's also something called a credit union. Um, those tend to be owned by employees and members. They tend to have slightly lower rates, uh, loan rates and interest rates. So they are often in your best interest to explore if you're looking to get a loan, but they only give out loans to their members. Um, sometimes there's a fee associated with being a member as well. You also have something called finance companies. Finance companies take over installment debts from stores and adds a fee for collecting the debt, relieving the store from the responsibility of collecting the debt. So finance companies, um, I have a little sad face next to them because they are not always in your best interest uh, to uh, utilize. I had you guys watch this brief video of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver about predatory lending. Um, I know we watched some of it in class, but we I would like for you to watch the rest of it. Um, please make sure that you watch the rest of it because I think it's really important information for you guys to know about. So quickly, you want to make sure that you know the difference between a commercial bank and a credit union. Uh, so take a moment, make sure you have the answer in your head. And a, a commercial bank um, tends to be the big banks, right? We talked about Bank of America, Wells Fargo, those, those really big banks. Um, and those tend to be owned by corporations. And uh, as we saw in that short documentary film that I showed you, whose best interest does a corporation have? Not the consumers. The corporation has the best interests of its shareholders. And so its goal is to make money. So commercial banks, their goal is to make money. Credit unions, since they're owned and operated by members of the credit union, they still their goal is still to make money, but um, in a, a slightly different way. Um, often credit unions um, tend to have better rates. We also talked about charge accounts. Uh, charge accounts are credit extended to a consumer, allowing the consumer to buy goods and services, this is the important part, from a particular company now and pay for them later. So that would be something like a Macy's card or a Nordstrom's card. Those are cards that you can only use at that store. And there are different types. There's a regular charge account, which is like a credit card, but you can only use it at one store. There's a revolving charge account, uh, same idea that it closes at a certain date and then revolves and kind of rolls over, and even installment charge accounts. If you need more detail on those, it's detailed more in your book. So the question is, what type of accounts is a Nordstrom's card or a Macy's card? They are charge, charge accounts. Um, and this is a little tricky. This is what type of plan is Walmart's layaway plan? And um, I have a link here to a story about Walmart's layaway plan. Walmart's layaway plan allows you to say your little kid wants a Star Wars action figure, because I know I'm really excited for the new Star Wars movie coming out. Um, but the uh, Star Wars action figurine is $100, which is pretty steep for a figurine. And so you're sitting there thinking, gosh, I don't know if I can afford it. But hey, Christmas is five months away. Maybe if I put $20 a month away or towards this toy, I'll be able to afford it in five months. Um, so Walmart's layaway plan is that you put money towards a certain good and that they will hold that good or reserve that good for you. Um, this would be an example of a charge account paying with an installment plan. 
it's but it's unique in that you would pay ahead and then receive the good around Christmas time, which is different. Normally you get the goods now and you pay for them later. So this is slightly flipped. Credit cards are something that you're probably more familiar with. Like a charge account, they allow a person to make purchases without paying cash, but can be used in many different types of stores. And that's the important part of, and how credit cards are different from charge accounts. Credit cards can be used almost anywhere, and they're often issued through the bank, uh, whereas charge accounts are issued through the store. So slightly different. Um, and credit cards give consumers access to loans without having to apply for them. Uh, so that part's important because um, every time you want to swipe your credit card, you're not going to go petition the bank and say, hey, I want this uh, $5 tea pumps. Uh, may I please borrow $5 so that I could drink my tea pumps now and I'll pay you back later? You're not going to go to the bank every time and ask them for that. So this is saying you're pre-approved to borrow a set amount of money up to your credit limit. And then you will pay that money back. Debit cards are slightly different because they are immediate transfers from a bank account to the person they are paying. So there's less of a loan involved, uh, or there is no loan involved. Uh, it's an immediate cash transfer. You're just using a card to do it. Okay, so debit cards are different from credit cards in that credit cards you're taking a loan from a bank, whereas a debit card you're just moving money that is already in your account to somebody else or to a company. So often, each of these types of accounts include finance charges, and these finance charges uh, are the cost of credit expressed in monthly dollars and cents. The way this is measured is through something called APR. APR stands for Annual Percentage Rates, and those are the cost of credit expressed as a yearly percentage. Okay, so you have finance charges, which are expressed as monthly charges, and then APR, which is the cost of credit is expressed as a yearly percentage. Okay, so this is an example of a credit card statement. And there's a list of questions on the right hand side, uh, which I'd like for you to take a moment, pause this video, please take a moment and just look through each of these questions. There might be something similar to this on the test. So I'd like for you to really take a close look at this. So speaking of, what is the date of the statement? So look up, so the statement date, hopefully you can find that. Then you should be able to also find the payment due date. Okay, so you'll notice that there's a little bit of time between those two. So you'll receive the statement at a certain time and then you have until the payment due date to get the payment there. You don't have until the due date to send the payment. You have until the due date to set, to get the payment there. So if you're sending it via even digitally, one thing to note is that digital transfers are not always immediate. Sometimes they take a couple days to get there, especially if it's between banks. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, two or three days ahead of your statement due date, you want to make sure that you've sent that payment. If you're sending it snail mail, you want to leave even longer. So next thing, number two, you're going to look through and find the annual percentage rate. So find the APR. Might take you a second. Wowza! Look at that percentage rate. So that's an annual percentage rate. Okay, remember that's an annual percentage rate. That's still pretty high. Then you're going to find the corresponding periodic rate. So that's the period. Rate. So if you think that's about the monthly rate, right? because the, the statement period is about a month. What is the new balance? So you want to go find the new balance. So the new balance is $125.24. The previous balance, you should be able to find, see if you can find the previous balance. Good, it's $168.80. And you can see and you can count how many charges were made during the billing cycle. It's the number in the middle, activity since last statement. You should just count the number of, of transactions. You should see one, two, three, four, five transactions 
and up at the very top you see a minus 168.80. That tells you that is the amount that was credited and it's kind of nice because it tells you it says payment thank you, but that you paid $168.80 in the previous billing cycle and then in the time between that you spent $125.24. Um, see, you want to look around, do you see any late charges? Luckily I see no late charges, which is great. Uh, you can go look at your credit line, so see if you can find the credit line. You should see a big number, $1,200. So that means they can spend up to $1,200. But remember what we talked about in class, how you never want to use more than 50% of your credit line because it affects your credit score. So really, you should only ever spend a maximum, absolute maximum, of $600. Um, then you're going to look into and see what is the total amount of the, of the sorry, what is the total amount of charges made during the current billing period. And then you're going to see um, where were the finance charges, what is the account number, where should the payment be sent. At the very top right hand corner you should see send payment to. Good. So now that, so again a lot of banking is done online now so it won't quite look like this anymore. Um, but this is just to familiarize you with yourself with a credit card statement. Um, they can be really confusing, so make sure that you understand it. And if you need to, don't hesitate to go to your bank and ask questions. Okay, so take a moment, please, um, and just think about the application of this um, to see if um, you feel comfortable applying it. So if I was to say you have two credit card bills, one is $200 at 4% interest, the other is $180 at 18% interest. The question is, which do you pay off first and why? So take a moment and think about that. So do the math if you need to. So the math involved is going to be, you're going to take $180 and you're going to multiply it times 1.18. And you should get $212.40. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take $200 and you're going to times it times 1.04. And you're going to get $208. So you'll see that the $180 charge is actually growing much, much quicker than the $200 charge, even though $200 is more than $180. So you usually want to pay off the one with the higher interest rate first um, because it will grow at a much quicker rate. And sometimes that depends, but um, most of the time you want to go with the higher rate unless one is much, much, much higher than the other. Okay, we have another application activity. So imagine you are the parent of a teenager about your age and you are instructing him or her to use credit in a safe and wise way. Sounds kind of similar to our cost of living project. Um, what are the pros and cons of credit? So take a moment, if you're taking notes, um, write out a pro, con, t-chart, please. Um, and say, I would go through and just say, what are the pros of using credit? What are the cons of using credit? We're going to go over that in a second. So, how do you get credit? And that's a complicated question. Um, there are three different credit agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, that help you to keep track of your credit score. Um, the three sometimes have different formulas, so sometimes you'll see that they have a slightly different credit score, um, but they keep track of a bunch of information for you uh, and for potential lenders. So what they'll do is they keep track of whether you pay your bills on time, whether you pay them in full every month. They will look at how many loans you have, what types of loans you have. Um, they can even look at things like where you've lived and your employment history. 
And the reasons for this are they're trying to see if you are going to be a, um, how, how risky, how risky of a, or how big of a risk you are as someone who's taking out a loan. So they are looking to see um, if, what is the likelihood that if they give you some money, you're going to get your money back or they're going to get their money back. And the example I provided in class was if you know that your little brother already owes your parents a hundred dollars and then he comes to you and he's begging you for twenty dollars so that he can go to the movies or go to a concert or something. Um, are you going to loan him that twenty dollars if you know that he already owes your parents a hundred dollars and he doesn't have a job and he only gets maybe ten dollars a week for doing his chores? Probably not, right? Maybe you're a super nice big sister, but um, the chances are that you might not want to give him any more money. And the credit card companies are kind of similar. They're going to look at your credit score and they'll say, mm, "This doesn't look like a very good investment. We're not going to we're not going to give you that loan that you've asked for." So the nice thing is, is that you are entitled, thanks to a federal law, you are entitled to one free credit report every 12 months from each of the three credit reporting companies. There's TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, right? Those three credit reporting companies. And you can go to annualcreditreport.com and they will show you um, some information. So you have to log in and you have to show prove who you are, provide your social security number, all this, but um, it's it can be very, very helpful. In fact, I have it set in my calendar every four months that I log on to this website and choose one of the three credit union or credit um, reporting agencies and have them report my credit score, uh, which is helpful. And I, I closely look over my credit report to make sure that there's no kind of falsified activity, to make sure that nobody's stolen my identity because identity theft is huge. Um, things like that. So those are things you want to, you probably want to do, uh, especially as you go uh, out to the big wide world away from home. So how are credit scores calculated? That's a very good question. Uh, I actually don't know the exact formula because it's not public knowledge as far as I know. Um, so, but what I can tell you is the credit scale. So you'll see down here, you've got the worst scores. Those are 300 all the way up to 499. Those are kind of not so great scores. Credit may be denied altogether. So they may say, you know what, you're too risky. We don't trust you and we don't think we're gonna get our money back. So we're not gonna give you that money. Then um, you have a lower credit score. This is kind of the fair range all the way to the getting into the good range. Um, and that would be from 580 all the way up to 660 or sorry, to 719. So all the way up to about this greenish yellow up here. Um, and those are going to be, you're going to need to put down a higher down payment. You might have to have a co-signer to guarantee the loan. You might not be able to qualify for the loan at that amount, which means a less expensive purchase may need to be considered. So if you want to go get a really nice new car, but you can only get approved for a loan for half of the amount, you're going to need to put down either you put down more money to begin with, so you have to come up with a higher down payment, or you might have to uh, reconsider and maybe get a less expensive car. Then up at the very top in this green zone, you have the very good to the excellent scores. And these are the most favorable interest rates that have lower monthly lease or loan payments. You have a higher likelihood of qualifying for the lease or the loan. You have access to incentives offered by the manufacturer or the seller. So these, this is what you're aiming for. Your goal is to build your credit score and you're gonna build and build and build all through your teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. This is something you continue to build and continue to build and continue to build. And your goal is to be up in this, this green range so that you have the best credit so that when you need to get a mortgage or when you need to get a car or when you need to rent an apartment, you never run into an issue of your credit score being a problem. One thing to note, sorry, very quickly, um, is also that there are ways for you to diversify your credit. Um, you want to show that you have multiple lines. So you don't always want to have um, 20 credit cards, 
that's never a good idea, right? You don't want to have more than one, really you don't want to have more than two credit cards, maximum three. Um, I was speaking to somebody earlier who mentioned that they will go to a store and say they're having a deal on credit cards um, and so that if you sign up for the um, Bloomingdale's credit card today, you get 50% off your purchase. That's a pretty tempting offer. And what they said is that they would sign up for those deals and then cancel them. And you don't want to do that. And part of the reason is that when you apply for a loan, they will investigate your payment history by pulling your credit score. And there are two types of hits on your credit score. There are hard hits and there are soft hits. Soft hits don't damage the score of your, don't damage your credit score. Hard hits, however, do. They kind of ding your credit score. Not a huge amount, but enough to say, hey, somebody has been looking at your credit. And it's supposed to show other agencies that you've been kind of looking around to get a loan and that you um, might be considering taking out money. So when, that's important to note. All right, collateral. Um, often, there are two types of loans. There are secured loans and Insecure, unsecured loans. Um, a secured loan is a loan that is backed up with collateral. That's when the borrower signs a legal agreement allowing the lender to claim the collateral if the loan is not replayed. The interest rate is usually lower than on an unsecured loan, which is a loan given on character and a promise to repay. Some people can use um, expensive items as collateral. So you'll use things like your car or your house the problem with that is that if you don't pay, then the loan, the people who have the loan can, and they're in their rights to, come and take your house, or they can come and take your car, right? That's where in movies often you'll see people knocking down the door and taking away furniture, and that's because they, they bought them on collateral. Okay, so let's apply this. Jenny wants to rent an apartment for her freshman year at Berkeley. Go Bears. She found the perfect apartment that's close to campus and in a good neighborhood and has and she got a great roommate. They took a tour of the apartment, filled out an application, but at the bottom it asks for her signature for the landlord to do a background check and to pull her credit score. Jenny really wants the apartment, but since she pulled her free credit score re, free credit report recently, she knows that since she hasn't built her credit score, that her credit score is in the very low range. The landlord asks her to have her parents co-sign the lease as a means of collateral. Okay, so this is just a, a kind of common example that you guys might find when you go away to college. Okay, so there are always risks involved with taking out any sort of credit. One of the risks uh, is collection agencies. If you don't pay your bills, companies can send your bill to collections. Collections are kind of scary because what that means is that they can come and do things like wage garnishment. Wage garnishment is that they are within their rights to take a percentage of your wages, of your salary, your paycheck, before you get it. So they could say, okay, you make $200 a week. We're going to take $100 of that until you have paid off this debt that you have. You also don't really want to get bad credit. And the, with the collection agency, so often they'll ding your score if something goes to collections. So you want to try to avoid collections when possible. Also, you don't want to get into extreme debt. It's not worth it. It's something that can haunt you for your, the rest of your life. So you have to be really careful with getting into debt. Um, there's, Like we talked about, there's good debt and bad debt. Good debt helps you to build credit. Bad debt is the kind that when you're spending more than you can afford, okay? You never ever want to spend, even on a credit card, more than you know you are able to pay back. You also risk identity theft. So that's an important thing that you want to uh, check your credit score for identity theft. Lastly, um, government regulation of credit. So there are a couple cool laws that have really helped um, consumers recently. Uh, they include the Truth in Lending Act. Um, the Truth in Lending Act was uh, passed in 1968, and it requires creditors to keep consumers fully informed about the costs and conditions of borrowing. So they can't say, hey, you want to borrow this money? 
um, and you say yes, and then all of a sudden they tack on all these crazy conditions. Luckily, uh, that is no, no longer the case, um, or at least it's not supposed to be the case. Um, creditors have to keep you fully informed. So if you have a credit card, often you'll get a notice in the mail that says, hey, the terms and conditions of your loan or of your credit card are changing. And that is a, a result of the Truth in Lending Act of 1968. Another law is the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. That passed in 1974, and that stated that credit cannot be denied based on race, religion, national origin, gender, marital status, or age, or simply because income comes from public assistance benefits. So this is great. This means that no matter who you are, no matter what race, what religion, what national, where, what country you come from, what gender you are, what marital status, if you're single or married, or um, what age you have, uh, no matter what, you should be able to be get credit, or that credit cannot be denied based on those factors. It might be denied based on other factors, but it cannot be denied based on these factors. Lastly, you have the state usury laws. Usury is a word that we're going to see come up again and again, so you need to make sure that you know what that means. State usury laws are state laws that restrict the amount of interest that can be charged for credit. Not all states have them, and many have different maximum rates. Okay, this is going to come up again when we talk about subprime mortgages in the next video. Okay, so state usury laws state or are laws that ha say that state laws re restrict the amount of interest that can be charged for credit. Okay, so they can't charge you on a credit card. They cannot charge you 3,000%. Okay, we're going to see what happened when it, there was some deregulation right, a term that you guys should remember from Reaganomics, but when there was some deregulation um, of, of some of these laws, some of these laws were changed, okay, state usury laws were changed, and credit companies and loan companies, like the payday lenders that we learned about, were allowed to charge some pretty outrageous rates. Okay, sorry, the very last slide, um, personal bankruptcy. Uh, personal bankruptcy, sometimes you'll hear people say, oh my gosh, my loans are so big, I should just go into bankruptcy. And that is not really a fair statement. Okay? Personal bankruptcy should be an absolute last resort. Um, it is the state of legally having been declared unable to pay off debts owed within with the available income. A couple things, it's not as easy as it sounds. You must be approved through bankruptcy court. Debtors have to give up most of what they own, which is then distributed to creditors. Creditors, so they sell off everything that they own for cash, liquidate everything that they own, and then it goes towards paying your bills. It's a little scary. And it also remains on your credit record for 10 years. That's a really, really, really long time. So don't go into bankruptcy. And it's very, very, very difficult to borrow any money in the meantime. So not only have you sold off everything that you own, but now you can't get a credit card, you can't get a loan, you can't get a mortgage, you can't get a car loan. Um, you really are kind of stuck. Okay, so that wraps up chapter four for us. Um, I will do chapter five in a separate video. Thanks for tuning in.